Hello class, hello professor, this is Anna Ronasano. I used and chose a cognitive behavior therapy as a treatment for trauma for this contemporary theory presentation. And first and foremost, I will talk about what are the basic principles and the core principles of cognitive behavior therapy. Those explore the links between thoughts, emotions, and behavior. It is directive, time-limited structure approach used to treat a variety of mental health disorders. It aims to elevate distress by helping patients to develop more adaptive cognitions and behaviors. It is most widely researched and empirically supported psychotherapeutic me method and the strong evidence base is reflected in the clinical guidelines, which recommends it as a treatment for many common mental health disorders. And because I can currently work as a mental health behavior therapist in a correctional facility, my research would be based specifically on correctional facility trauma treatment with um, implement of CBT therapy. Um, so in male prison environment, the nature of cognitive behavior therapy is to view this function as a result of maladaptive thinking patterns as we all have some errors in our thinking, but um, and we all come with some kind of expectation from various life situations and certainly from people such as our parents, spouses, our children, etc. Prisoners come with very often distorted, dysfunctional expectation from people a lot of them come from dysfunctional families or they were raised in a for foster homes and group homes and pretty much never seen the life. All they have seen is parents or other family members using drugs and participate in criminal activities and this become a normal pattern behavior for them which lead them to prison as a grown adult and that's the kind of issues I will be talking about in my presentation. And the reason for selection specifically for CBT therapy in my presentation is because it is one of techniques I constantly use in my daily work. It is proven to be just right structured and evidence-based approach to foster significant psychological change. Um, improve rational thinking, decision making, and based on my experience, CBT is highly effective in promoting long-term recovery and emotional resilience in prisoners. What can be a causes of dysfunction? Causes of dysfunction could be very different beginning from the environment where prisoners were raised, as I mentioned earlier, ending with um, post-traumatic stress disorder after experienced trauma such as criminal activity, either witnessing somebody being shot in front of them, stopped in front of them, or participating in those activities. Um, as such a behavior, especially if implemented in their life during the early childhood, become normality and often prisoners don't recognize it is a dysfunction. So my job as a therapist to lead them to more rational thinking and as much as in the capacity of psychotherapy um, lead them towards the understanding 
between functional and dysfunctional and better choices in life. Uh, in my presentation, I have a case example working with a um, specific army veteran who is a prisoner as of now. He's going home a couple months from now, actually. Um, his, his trauma was very, very severe. We don't know yet at this point what kind of brain injury he received. Um, as a brain is the hardest compartment in your body to examine as a for instance if you have a broken ribs it's very easy to find through the um, x-rays unfortunately at this time there is no such an x-rays such an mri um, created for brain that would absolutely show us every compartment and every function or dysfunction of particular part of the brain. This is still an area to discover and I hope we will move forward with a lot of discoveries. Maybe some of my group mates would be the people to discover something new. That'd be amazing. Anyway, the therapy when, with this person, when I just met him, um, he couldn't calm down, period, or talk straight, or just be rational. Um, our first weeks of therapy, he became very emotional, started bursting in tears, and that was the door opener to begin of the process for recovery. Um, we work hard to recognize the triggers, implement a little self-hypnosis to our therapy to reverse the triggers, and slowly but surely, therapy did move forward, which makes me very satisfied. I'm kind of very proud of this case because it was specifically hard one. And can confirm that CBT therapy worked very well, which, um, I desensitization seem to be the very great technique for the trauma therapy, but it doesn't work with multiple traumas. If person has a complex PTSD, which is not in DSM book, unfortunately, the um, I desensitization would not work. It has to be separated one trauma at the time, one trigger at the time. Yet it's proven to be doable and it's a great form of therapy. As far as a Christian worldview with the CBT, certainly it aligns with the Roman principles of renewing your mind. And Apostle Paul says, and do not be conformed for this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, same Romans 12, 2 reminds believers of the importance of living a righteous life. One of, that's free of sin, and according to Paul, it is only through the practice that Christians can live by God's design. Um, this is very relevant in prison, again, when, especially those of the inmates who are in seclusion, they're in the singular cells they are more receptible for therapy, they're more receptible to be open to God and to changes, period. And that's a great time when they can be renewed and transformed. And this is just, again, indicating that Paul believes many Christians are turning away from God and are instead of shaped by the forces of the world and this worldly forces often oppose the ways of God. So the more we follow them, the more we veer away from a life that follow God's will. That's why it is just so important to transform, to see the light, to see the light in the end of tunnel. And that is the greatest success stories we have on the inmates who are in prison for life. Um, they come and 
in a very bad shape and to see them specifically transformed and renewed and offering help to other inmates um, it's very satisfactory it's very enlightening and it's very encouraging so yeah it's another great part of work and a great part of therapy <laughs> and thank you everybody for listening have a wonderful time bye